Last time... In a gladiator arena, surrounded by screaming people, Mimi turns into a giant scorpion and fights a Morkoth in single combat. The fight seems to be entertainment for the people and the leader of this odd place named Kyle, who also named the place Kyle Land. Galaxy aids in the fight with some hidden spells. Fat Deb performs some song and dance routines that earns her a couple of fans in Kyle Land. Mimi defeats the Morkoth, and the group is about to find what their reward is from Kyle. Oh yeah! Today my daughter asked, can I have a bookmark? And I burst into tears, 11 years old, and she still doesn't know my name is Kurt. Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters! No. Get a little hair flip. I'm ready. All right. Welcome, everyone, to another uh, butt face episode of Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters. I am Kirk Daddy, the Dungeon Master. Uh, we are a fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons actual play podcast. To my left, we have Sam, who plays Mimi, our favorite Druid Elf, the leader of the trio. And to my left, we have Galaxy, not the favorite. I'm a Elven Wizard. Um. And I'm, really I'm sure you're someone's favorite. No. I'm I'm the coolest. There you go. What the? <laughs> and I have Boom and two Molloy left. Yeah, but you don't know where Boom is at right now. <laughs> Mr. Buck Buck. <laughs> no, no one cares about Mr. Buck Buck. It's all oh, oh, you're, okay. you're in, in for it. And to my left, we have... Fat Deb. Played by... Fat Deb. <laughs> That's all I am now when I come into this basement. Mom doesn't exist anymore. She's very, she's very method actor ish. That's what she does. As soon as she steps in front of that microphone, Fat Deb. I don't fat think Deb. she's even an ish. She, she embodies Fat Deb. <laughs> oh gosh. You say All right. Body's fat. <laughs> All right. Real quick, we got another five star review from Brooke Wiles Ooh. titled "Love It." I am seven years old and love your podcast. I listen to it in the car and in my house with my mom and my brother. I wish I could play in your game. I play Dungeons and Dragons and Hedgehogs as a hedgehog born bard in my home game. His name is Prickles. Wonderful. And so, mom talking now. Uh, my ten and seven year old boys love your stories and shenanigans. And daddy and dungeon master gave. Gave me the confidence to DM for my own kids by making it seem fun and not so intimidating. I love your homebrew world and the mix of serious and silly. My kids listen to your show with the monster manual in hand, commenting play by play like sports fans. It <laughs> makes my nerdy heart proud. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful. We'd love to meet you. Where's characters. the popcorn then? <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Uh, we don't have any time to waste, so let's uh, let's just jump yeah. right into it. Let's play D and D. Yes, I must find my long lost chicken. Right. So yes. you girls. And it's all girls. You girls <laughs> were led away from the fighting pit. As butt faces. From Kyle Land. From, no, you're still, you're still technically in Aww. Kyle Land. But uh, uh, Kyle left. He floated out of the arena. People started leaving the arena after Mimi's big fight with the Morkoth. Bye, Kyle. And there's a couple couple of small cheers from the back of the audience of people cheering for, for but, Fat Deb and yeah. her performance Thanks, during the fight. Thanks, guys, to all my fans. Too and, uh, <laughs> um, okay. and Felicia comes up to you. What's up, Felicia? Come with me. Hey, have you seen a chicken? He has oversized glasses, talks, um, He's loves nerdy. coffee. Have you seen him? He has a, <laughs> he has a n- locket around his neck. You and a had ca- a chicken with you. Yeah? I would check the kitchen if I were you. Ah! No, We no. don't get many good food here. So if you had a fresh chicken... That chicken is in trouble. No, but he was no. a zombie chicken. No, what? No, wait. Then your chicken is dead. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. My chicken has a magical power around him. He can never die. It's a, oh, it's a magical chicken. Yes. Hmm. What color is your chicken? It, it's a normal chicken. Uh, is so it white? Blue? Is it brown? Or? It's blue? Wait, no, it's just a normal chicken. Was it what, a normal magical chicken? <laughs> <laughs> 
white. It's white? No. Okay. No, it's not white. What color is it then? It's like... <laughs> Normal chicken. <laughs> It's a brown chicken. A brown chicken, okay. okay. I picture it as a white chicken. What? No, or it's even a yellow. Is that, okay, so it's blue. not just brown. It was blue. there's some texture. I on vote it? for blue. Yeah, yeah. There's some like it's, um, it's, it wasn't the blue scaly parts on it. In my mind, it's not blue, even though it'd be a lovely. <laughs> Maybe it's a rainbow color because it's magical. Um, you know what? It, it, it's a normal chicken, okay. I, you- I still don't know what color this chicken is. <laughs> Um, it's like you know those like brown chickens that like pe- uh, that farmer people have. Yeah, brown. They're yeah, brown. I said brown. <laughs> but then you questioned it. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's have some confidence. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, so have, have you seen a dog, a corgi dog that looks? It's Frank and Corgi. It, it's a um, it has parts of it that's <laughs> different colors. I I think I would remember a dog like that. Oh, it, no, I have not seen it. Oh, it's oh, its name is Boom. He goes if that Boom. helps. Knowing the creature's name would not make it easier oh, to see. Wait, 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 Galaxy, try calling Boom like saying Boom, come. Yeah. Boom, come. Ruff, Fel- ruff. Felicia like looks up in the air and cocks his ear, listening. I don't hear anything. Mr. Bok Bok, come! Okay, I have. I am a very busy man. I am very important here in Kyle Land. I'm sorry, your pets were taken away and you landed in a horrible land. I need you. T- I need to show you to your quarters, and then you can look for your mangy animals. <laughs> okay. Okay. Rude. Oh, <laughs> you better not. <laughs> is there a toilet? Yes, there is a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> What's about a kitchen? There is, you do not have access food? to is your own kitchen. Is there food? The food will come by twice a day. Oh, okay. yeah. But we Got have things? three meals a day. You get two. Like everyone in Kyle Land, you get two. Fine. Two. Except for Kyle. Kyle gets food whenever he wants. What? Can I be Kyle? <laughs> I want you. cake. And he pauses for a moment. He's like, you wish to be Kyle? Grant <laughs> me to be Kyle! <laughs> Bertie, if you become Kyle, you're never leaving. And, he's, and he says, let's, let's walk and talk. Okay. Kyle. And, so, and he leads you out of the arena, and uh, he leads you through another metal door that opens up at his approach and closes behind you. And it's stone, wooden, ha- or, or not stone, wooden, it's a stone old hallway that, uh, that, that you're moving down. Well, that's um, apparently wood. That's not. It's not made of wood. It's made of stone, um, and it looks to be uh, a combination of old dwarven stonework and some natural carvings. But it's kind of like odd carvings. Um, the people dying. I was thing. about to say that. <laughs> no, no, Great minds think alike. No, no, not like statues of people. It's like yeah, it's just like the way that the yeah. wall has been carved out looks a little odd. No, like um, man yeah, like drawing. dead people yeah. were in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, the walls are made with dead people. That's that's why. Because you have lots of experience that. with walls being made of dead people. Know exactly what that Mimi, looks like. Mimi looks at Felicia with disgust. Do you, do you want to? I did not make the walls. Are they, f- are they, they were like this when I got here. When did you get here? I've been here for, I think, three years now. Oh, that, it's that. hard to tell because there's no sun. What? <laughs> and he leads you down this hallway. There's no suns? And, uh, and he turns the corner and it's another hallway. <laughs> um, so in this hallway, this hallway is filled with uh, pillars. And in these pillars... Uh, there are cleverly carved Dead eyes, people. like stone eyes that have been carved into these pillars. Do they and look like this? They do look like that. They look like really big eyes. And they were carved in a very clever way, because if you move forward or backwards, it looks like the eyes follow you. Like the Mona Lisa smile? That's right. Like That's right. <laughs> and uh, in here, there, uh, there does appear to be... Um, Oh, there's a uh, there's a woman that's in here. There is uh, she's a half elf, um, and she is. It looks like that she's actually doing some repairs on one of the columns on the on the stonework. Does that mean she's part human? That means that she is half elf, half human. Okay, good. We are full elf. 
right, so Felicia continue and so <laughs> Felicia <laughs> gets really quiet when when he sees this this woman in the hallway. He stops talking to you. So, but then as soon as you move out of the hallway, he ta- he makes another left into a, a another larger hallway, and he leads you down, and he starts talking again. It's like you, the tall elf girl with the ropes. Are you a wizard? Yes. <laughs> Are you a powerful wizard? No. Um, in my case, and out of all three of us, yes. <laughs> out of the three of you, you are the most powerful wizard. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, she is the only wizard. Yes. Any, any appraisers? All, but you got to remember, it's like he saw Mimi turn into a giant scorpion and take down the, uh, and she took down the Morkoth. Yes. So he saw that, and he saw the magical performance of Fat Deb in the arena mm-hmm. too. <laughs> yes. Would you like to see what I can do? So I can you do it discreetly? What's discreetly? Can you do it in secret so no one would notice? She did. Uh, oh, sure. Gosh. Why not? Okay. If- I'll just so he to, he stops yeah. in the middle of the hallway and he looks left, he looks right, doesn't see anyone coming. He's like, "Show me what you got." Um, uh, mage. Would you like so, um? Here, let me find my powerfulest spell. And are you just gonna shoot it down the hallway, or are you gonna are you gonna like shoot? Are you gonna attack him? Is that what's happening? No. Right now? Okay. No. She should do mage hand her most powerful spell. <laughs> do I have a level six? I I don't what know. What is a mage hand? So one of Birdie's favorite spells is called Mage Hand. Yeah, and what it does that. is that it conjures a disembodied magical hand that she can make float anywhere and she can control it just like it's one of her hands. So she can like pull levers, she can carry stuff, she can pickpocket, she can even punch people. But the problem is that you can only exert 10 pounds of force. Um, do I have one of these? You do not have a Mage Hand, no. What? Why not? <laughs> it's I a, want a floating hand. It's a wizard specific spell. Can I have a floating foot? A floating what? kick people when I want. Um, yes, uh, okay. actually, you do. You do have a, a spell that's called spiritual weapon, and it lets you conjure a free floating weapon that can be in any shape that you want. And so you could make it a foot and make it kick people if you wanted to, or just a giant head of fat dub. Yeah, it, it, it could be. Yeah, your head floating there that you just headbutt people. That would be Yo. your spiritual oh, weapon. Dude, <laughs> I am no, finding this card. No, you were. You could, found it. No, you. <laughs> No, you could like you could do one of your performances with your head too. Oh, right, I can sing still with my head, oh, with your <laughs> but head. my resting face is just this. Yeah, that's great in an audio medium, Joe. I, I don't care. I was giving it for you guys. <laughs> you guys. It was a derby face. Okay, one more time. One more time. <laughs> no. Okay. I, I no. have it. I the, have it. No. The moves. <laughs> yeah, just look at Birdie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys are so much alike. All right. So, so Birdie. So Felicia okay. is looking at Felicia. you intently. Um. So okay. Just this is for the dungeon master question. Um, okay. Do you think disintegrate would impress him or something? I think disintegrate would be extremely impressive, but, but that is an extremely destructive spell. Who are you going to no, disintegrate? I'm, I'm going to do an i like an item. An item. Yeah. Okay. On what item? Um. Um, I can check mine. Yeah. Um, let me check. Am I supposed to be checking something? No. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a, so it's nobody's turn, really. So you, get, if they, if you've got a thought or you got an idea, there's something you want to try. You could just speak up and work it out with them on what it is that you want to try. It's only in combat that's when the turns are extremely regimented. But in this period of time, it's a free for all. Here, um, I'm going to ask Felicia, uh, do you have anything on you that um, you don't really care about what you have? I have a wood stick. I, uh, not on me, but in the other room, I think I have something that's perfect. Okay, I'd like to see it. Okay. Pulls out a diamond. I don't know. I couldn't think of something that he doesn't care about. Yeah. All right. So uh, he leads you into a rather large room that's got a couple of different openings in it. Um, and Bertie, uh, can you roll a perception check for me? Why? Natural twenty. Natural twenty. Wow. Okay. Especially so you twenty five. Okay. So you get to see a lot of stuff that's going on in this room right now because that roll is so good. Okay. So the first thing that you pick up is that this room is now hastily being cleaned. 
by about six Kuatoa. Can they come to my house? Kuatoa, so for, for your mom, because she's never seen these creatures before, is that they're about they're about five feet tall, but they're about half fish head with a picture of giant fish head oh, with really? arms and legs. And those guys? Yeah, those guys. They've got those big old guys. fish with sharp teeth in yeah, them and they've got eyeballs that can go in different directions. And they, they're they moving around, their feet are flopping on the ground. And, and that's one thing that you pick up as well is that their feet, wherever they step, there's this coat of slime that oh. comes out from their, their feet. Everywhere they go or touch, they coat so it in slime. So um, basically, when Sam walks... Okay, uh, can you tell me what the well, items I, are? There, there's a lot more that I gotta go through here. Yeah, yeah so, so, sh- so one, of the, one of the things that the Kuotoa are doing, so they're hastily cleaning this large room up, and they've got buckets, and they've got mops, <laughs> and you notice that the mops and the buckets all have a pink, reddish tinge color to them. <laughs> so whatever was done in this room beforehand... You pick. You suspect that there was a lot of violence and terrible things that had happened in this room that they're cleaning up before you get there. Okay, tell me more. There is more. All right. So at uh, at one end of this big room is a portcullis. A portcullis is the sort of like jailed grid door that 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 falls down in front of castles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's about halfway up. It's not closed all the way. And you can see on the other side um, that there uh, is a bloody table that's inside that room. And uh, you can hear some hushed groans and some hushed talking coming from that room. In front of you, there's another hallway. And when you look down that, it looks like that there's a number of rooms that have been set aside. And it looks like this is where Felicia is taking you. But... They're, they look like they're converted jail cells. So they look like, so there's actually bars that are separating the beds from each other, but someone had taken off the jail doors. So you're not being locked in, but you have no privacy. And no. so that's where, where all the rooms are there. Wait, is that what, what they're, he's taking us to sleep? That's where he's taking you to. And but then what about the item? And in the middle of that room... Well, actually, let me finish it in the description in the room that you're in right now. So the Kuatoa that are cleaning up the room right now, that are leaving all the slime behind, they're walking backwards towards you, and they're using the mop to clean up the slime behind them. So they're doing their best to clean up all of the gunk and slime that they've left everywhere but from their own bodies, but there was, it does look like that they were actually cleaning up a bigger, bloodier mess that had happened in here. So you get led down to the left again going down another hallway and in this bed with the six converted jail cells in the middle of the room is a golden statue that's about seven feet tall well the statue itself is only about three feet tall on a four foot pedestal and it's a uh it's a golden statue of a hammerhead shark head on top of a really buff human body and it's posing we got half fish, half human, and half shark, and half human. <laughs> right. Yes? Right. Okay. Right. And uh, Felicia, he sort of, <laughs> there is the item that you can do your magic on. Well, I get, um, wait, who is it? It's the golden statue that he's referring to. So it's okay if it gets destroyed, right? I don't care if it gets destroyed. It, will I get in trouble if it's destroyed? Not from me. But uh, the uh, Kuatoa back there, they think it's a god. I think it would be funny to teach them this is no god. Will you defend me then? Well, you're a powerful wizard. You should be able to take care of yourself. How many uh, are there? Uh, you look around, uh, Felicia, <laughs> down the hall, and uh, there's, there's about four of them. I whisper. Just don't do it. Will you get in trouble? I will not get in trouble, no. I am Felicia. I am the head of service in Kyle Land. So I will get in trouble? I, I, I don't know. I, I, am, I am only in charge of the service department in Kyle Land. Don't do it. What do you guys think? What should I do? Not it. Deb. Mm. Tell me. Give me an answer. Hmm. Don't. Tell me. <laughs> I love she won't listen to you at all. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. 
I'll do it. What? <laughs> Don't scream. All right, so you're going you're to cast Disintegration on yes. this thing. Yes, okay. I'm actually this kind of scared. not my fault. Could I actually die from it? Of what happens? You don't know? But dead. As far as you can tell, it's just a normal, mundane, golden, half-shark, half-human statue. But do you statue. think I could get, like, in combat? <laughs> Um, it's possible you notice that the Kuatoa they're they're watching you out of the corner of their eyes as they're cleaning up. They're they're seeing what you're doing back there. Don't I'm do gonna, it. I'm gonna ask him who do they work for? It's like they work for Kyle. Like everyone else here. I thought you were interested in coming or I'm sorry, I thought you were interested in becoming the new Kyle. Do you not want to take over? Yes, I'm interested. Um, it's just, I don't want to, I don't feel like, um, doing whatever this is. Look, hmm. but Look, hey, fully, but, fully but fully listen fully. to this. I, I, I have this marker in my, uh, my pocket. You have a marker? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but watch this. I, <laughs> what color I, is your marker? <laughs> it's black. Oh. It's black? Okay. Don't I, do I draw a mustache on the... <laughs> <laughs> It's a dry race, though. Can, can you give yourself a point of inspiration if you don't have one already? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So Felicia looks like this. He's like, hmm. We will talk more later. <laughs> and, Wait, uh, you, you didn't you didn't show your magic, oh, Galaxy. Yes, and uh, Galaxy, can you, well, you you rolled a twenty before, so I'll I'll let that stand because it's like so you're like hyper perceptive of everything that's going on right now. And uh, so Felicia turns to leave, and you look past him, and one of the Kuato is giving you an evil eye. For what you did. Oh, but, you made but an it's enemy, Dad. It's dry erase. Right, right. Yeah, it could easily be cleaned off. But still, you drew a mustache on their god. I'm gonna whisper when uh, Felicia lives. I'm gonna whisper to them. It comes off. Well, they're they're well they're, they're out in the other room. So you're gonna go out into the previous room and nah. and whisper to them that. Well, I'm gonna follow Felicia. Oh, you're gonna follow Felicia. You'll probably okay. try to scrub it off, right? Look. Will you, you tell me what are you doing? What are you doing? I draw the mustache on them with the dry erase marker. Okay. Yeah. Birdie, I drew so a unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> you just take so it from my hands. Fat Deb walks up and grabs the marker out of your hand and draws a unibrow <laughs> on the on the hammerhead shark. You've made enemies. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're both. Birdie, uh, sorry, Galaxy, still have to show your your powers. <laughs> I just did. Well. But Felicia's the? walking away at this point. He said that he'll, yeah, we, we will talk later. Yes, uh, I just don't feel like, but the mustache, that's pretty good, right? Hmm. So is the unibrow. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's not bad. It's something I took could, could you show me my chicken? I don't, no. I don't know where your chicken you is. You know where he is? I don't know what your chicken Suddenly is. Suddenly I take out a green marker and go up to the nose of it and just draw <laughs> a little boogie. <laughs> he chuckles at that boogie, <laughs> and he walks away. We follow. Okay, you're gonna follow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where's our room, though? Yeah. You were just in it—the room with the like the converted jail cells. That's your room. What? Yeah, that's your room. My privacy. That's where you expect us to sleep. Sorry, um, Mister, um, Mister Felicia, um. <laughs> what? I am busy. Is that why? Uh, um, that is not a room. That is a jail cell. These accommodations are much better compared to the rest of the residents of Kyle Land. Okay. Well, thank you. Except for Kyle. Kyle has the. It's, yes. He has the best room. Of course. He's Kyle. It's Kyle Land. I mean. I suddenly I suddenly take out my um from my unicorn butt backpack that I'm wearing. Okay. Um, I take out my my uh, my uh, unicorn uh, blanket and then the my unicorn pillow. And okay. I just place it on my bed. Okay. Um, I take out my slippers. I put it at the foot of the bed. Make yourself at home. Yep. I got it. Yep. Okay. Um, do you know where chickens might be kept? Um, like I said, if you had a chicken, I would check the kitchen. Um, uh, where is the kitchen? <sighs> and he uh. He looks around, exasperated for a moment, uh, and then he sees a a turtle 
walking by coming down a the tortle? hall. A tortle? A tortle. It's a tortoise he's turtle. About, he's about five, five foot two, five foot three, oh. but he's big. He's got a massive shell on him. Like he's really, really round, and he's got he's got a real he's, all of his skin is very dry and very wrinkly, but he's got thick. It, yeah, but it looks like it's thick, thick rough skin. skin. Yep, that's exactly and, what uh, Fat Devin is. And he's moving. <laughs> I have to have a thick skin. <laughs> he's moving very slow and very methodically. Oh my gosh, it sounds so much like her. Down, <laughs> down uh, the hall, Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Felicia says, "Ubo." Get over here. Show them to the kitchen. I have better things to do. He slowly turns. And this, this turtle looks at him and says, But you're the service department. Super. And he, <laughs> and he keeps walking. It doesn't look like that this, this turtle is going to, going to stop. And Felicia's like, oh, this, is, this, is, this is Ubo. He is in charge of defense in uh, in Kyle Land. He's in charge of defense. So he is going in the direction of the kitchen. So you follow him. Um, I bet he's saving up all his energy. And then he's like, when it happens, he's like, Hoo-ya! <laughs> He's a ninja turtle. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so uh, why can't you show us to the kitchen? <sighs> Fine. I will show you to the kitchen. So you go back through that that hall that you went through before, and with the the pillars with the uh, the cleverly carved eyes that are in there, and it looks like the the woman that was in there um, is finishing up the maintenance that she was doing. She was doing some uh, some patching of the the stonework, and there was actually a pool of uh, water that is now in in the hallway that it seems like that she has has patched up. So there was water that was leaking through through holes in the walls. And uh, she's picking up her tools and cleaning herself up, and, uh, and she eyes all all of you kind of suspiciously as you go walking by with, I with Felicia. I wave kindly. I wave. She gives you a... She doesn't wave back, but she gives you a, kind of a, a quick, short nod as you Do move I down the hallway. Do I slip in the water? Um, Do you want to slip in the water? I don't know. I just... I was wondering if I did. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yes, yes, you do. Okay, roll a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> oh, God. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to slip in the water. Okay. <laughs> then, I won't interrupt. <laughs> you don't slip in the water then. Okay. All right then. <laughs> you answered my question. <laughs> All right. So he leads you into a, another area. Of uh, of Kyle Ann. and uh, the one thing that, that you will notice is that everything seems to be uh, stone walls and stone tunnels. There is there's been no sky whatsoever that you've seen anywhere. So as far as you can tell, this entire place, everywhere that you've been so far, has been completely underground. So this uh, next section, this next hallway that he brings you into, um, is that. Now the walls are carved with all with eyes of all shapes and sizes, and many of them have have eyelids that open and close at irregular intervals. So not only do the eyes seem to be watching you in this section, now the eyes sort of like randomly flicker, open and blink at you as you go by. Deb, fat Deb, can you roll a roll a perception check for me? Start with this one. Yeah, the D20. Okay. That's the one with, like, the tinier side, the most tiniest side. <gasps> what did we say? A natural 20. You got a natural 20? I did. I did. Wow. For the it's time <laughs> and forever. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> True day. Now what? So in this hallway, you notice that uh, Felicia is leading you towards a stairwell that uh, is on the eastern wall and it looks like that there's another door on the northern wall of this hallway but something catches your eye on the left hand side it looks like the 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 light in the hallway catches the stonework just right as you're walking by and you can tell there's a secret door that's been built into the wall on the west wow deb is actually smart well she or she's just very observant Accuse me? 
One other thing that you do notice is that there is a... It looks like an eye stock that is hanging down from the ceiling in this hallway. And it's got an eyeball at the end of it. And it is fouling all of you as you move down the hallway. And it's not its not made of stone. its It looks almost like a cat eye that's on the end of this grayish... Uh, veiny stock that's coming out of the ceiling. Do I think ceiling. it's a spider and I go to like s- s- mech it away? Based off of what I described, would you think that it's a spider? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, did we see it too or no? Oh, only Dub sees these things. Well, you see the stairway coming up and then but the, the eye stock, uh, Deb's the only one that sees it and the secret doors, that's the only thing that she sees. Because what if Mr. Papa has been eaten by a spider? So at this point, I do what? Whatever you want. You you could you could keep that information to yourself. You could um, try and get at the eye stock or try and get the secret door. You could tell the girls about I'd it. I'd like to tell them about the secret door. Are you going to do that in front of Felicia? No. We okay. have a uh, code language we use. Okay. Uh-huh. What languages can you speak? I can... In the lower left-hand corner of your sheet, it says what language is it that you know. So do we have to have one in common or yes. something? No. Oh. Well, you're, so you're looking for one that you three have in common that Felicia does not speak. What does Felicia not know? I, I don't know. you gotta, you got to try out common. some languages on them. I, it says common, halfling, elvish, and dwarven. Okay. So we have common and elvish. Um, I ask the guy uh, in uh, Elvish. I asked Felicia. I thought you knew Draconic. Oh. Yeah, we. But she doesn't know it's Draconic. Not, oh. oh yeah, I have Draconic. Um, uh, I asked Felicia. Do you know how to speak Elvish? I don't think so. Okay. Goodbye. No, no, please, please have us go. Do you want to test him? Like, do you want to insult him in Elvish and see if he reacts? I said. Can you understand me? Answer me in Elvish. And just, Cox says, like, what did you just say to me? I was just seeing if you knew what I said for Elvish. Did you insult me? No, I said, can you understand me? Answer me. Oh, no, I could not understand you. Okay. Okay, let's keep moving. I am a busy man. Okay, kitchens, here we go. Okay, just like whisper it. Wait. Deb should have said that. So, so Deb, so do you whisper to them in in Elvish what you had seen? I do. Okay, so girls, you know, you know, you look up and you see the the weird little eye stock that's that's following your motions. It's not a spider. And and when you look over on the west wall of this hallway, now that's when when she points it out. That's when you can see the the very faint but distinct lines of a secret doorway that's been hidden in the stonework. All right. Are we at the kitchen? Felicia leads you down. Maybe Boom will be here too. We see Mr. Bopbop fully alive. I rescue him in a happily ever after. <laughs> 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 we should get like a Mr. Bopbop. And uh, so he leads you down a large stone spiral staircase um, that's got uh, uh, torches and sconces leading down. And before you even get to the bottom of the stairs, you hear. Music and the banging. Is it rap? Un- no, it's not, no, it's not rap. Is it like it's like it's, it's like it's just like a kind of a rough, um, almost tribal or Latin. a folk type of music that's coming. Is um, it Elvish music? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so yeah, there's lots of yelling, there's laughing, and there's people banging on pots, and there's music that's going on. When you get down to the bottom of the stairs, that's when you see. Chicken. <laughs> you don't see a chicken. Mr. Bobbock. You see uh, uh, five humans and five lizard folk. And Mr. Bobbock in a corner. <laughs> having a having a celebration. Some of them are, they are eating chicken. Are they are not they are not eating chicken? As far as you can tell, they're not they're not eating chicken. And there are two goblins that are there as well, and they're dancing on top of the tables, and they've got pots on their hand on their heads, and they're banging the pots as they're dancing, and it looks like that they're. Uh, that they're they're celebrating right now, and uh, one of them yells out. One of the humans yells out, um, "We caught ourselves an Atlantean." Is For- that a chicken? <gasps> oh. And that's when oh, that's when oh, they stop. Oh, oh, oh. it's a fancy footwork. 
and they look at you and they see they see Felicia <laughs> there and Felicia is giving them all a dirty look and their music and all the dancing just suddenly uh, stops. Have you guys seen a chicken? They are looking for their chicken. Have you eaten it? And they all look around at each other. It's like, no, no, Felicia, we, we um, no, we we didn't we didn't eat any eat any chickens. Um, Have you seen a chicken? Um, no. But if uh, if there was a chicken, I would expect it. It would go to it would go to Kyle because was it alive? Was it a fresh yes. chicken? Yes. Yeah, that would, that would probably go to Kyle. So you're gonna want to check his kitchen. Oh, I bet Mr. Bok Bok and Kyle are having a lovely time. <laughs> um, um, do you know where his kitchen? Oh, wait. Do you know where his kitchen is? It's oh yeah, it's it's back that way down the hall. Oh, okay. excuse me. Have you ever have you seen a um a dog? Anywhere? Uh, a dog? Yeah. Uh, what? Um, a corgi? A Frank and corgi. Alive or dead? Alive. Well, no. kind of dead. Um, Co- and- <laughs> <laughs> kind of dead? Um, uh, can you be more specific? Um, he's, uh, he has different He's pat- made out of dead Sh- corgis. He has different patches of color and... Little stitches on him. Oh no, no! I don't think we've seen that. Okay. Oh, one more question: Who yeah. is this Atlantic person you've caught? Oh, the, oh, you, you didn't hear? No. You didn't hear? No. Kyle caught an Atlantean, or well, we caught an Atlantean. Yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah, yeah, we caught an Atlantean. What, what's his name? The, or, or her name? Well, um, I, oh, I, I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Where is he? But it's a, it was her. a him. Okay, where is he? Um, I, 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 I'm not sure. I think I think Ubo has her or has him. Wait, wait, is it um what what type of um uh accent does uh the fifty foot work guy have? Oh, he had an accent like this when he would speak to you, and he liked you very much. No, no, is it like a Scottish? No, so I so to remind you, Ian was also with you, and he is from Atlantis. Yes. 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 That was the reason Doc sent him along with the group is because he was supposed to be your guide once you got to Atlantis. Wait. Um. What color hair does Ian have? Ian has blonde hair. Um. What does he have? The Atlantean have blonde hair. Um. I uh, I think so. It was it was hard to tell. We were far away. It's just like you know, word spread very quickly, and well, is Ian well, tall? Yeah, yes, no, yeah, he, yeah, he had blonde hair, yeah, because yeah, I yeah, I caught him. Yeah, we caught him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, could you point to me which direction the um um Kyle's kitchens are again? Oh, uh, yeah, it's just down that hall. I dash out the door to the hall. Okay. Is it the like secret door that's his kitchen? Is no, is that is that is no, is further away from that hallway where Deb had seen the secret door. Okay, so I go, I go, I run there. So it's on the same floor. So you came down those circular steps, and you got to to this area where this uh, sort of like a mess hall is that has uh, that has a kitchen attached to it. But further along, away from this mess hall, is another hallway that goes down to another kitchen. I run over there. Okay. So you break into this this room. You come to a sliding uh, stop in front of this kitchen. And this kitchen is much nicer than the previous kitchen and mess hall that you were in. The, the previous mess hall and kitchen is like no one was doing dishes. There was one guy that you could see that was cooking. Um, but in here, there are seven goblins wearing white two cats. And they are preparing meals. And this are kitchen is fully stocked with, there are chickens in crates. <laughs> there are pigs. There's there's fresh um, parsley and produce and spices and other things. And there's pots that are simmering over fires and cauldrons that are ready to go. And it looks like that they're baking bread in these huge ovens. <laughs> is there any chickens with oversized glasses? Why don't you roll, roll a perception check? I'm shaking. <laughs> You want to kill Mr. Bokpok? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. So as as you go walking in, um, one of the goblins calls out to you. He's like, "Hey, hey, you!" Sorry, I lost my. Chicken. And he throws his hat at you. It's like we haven't had a break in four days. It's your turn to take over. And they all walk out of the room. Uh... 
And then that's when you see the glimmer of lights off of glasses in one of the cages of this ki- of this kitchen. Mr. Bok Bok, is that you? Mimi? Hey. Mimi, it's you. Hey, hey, can you, uh... I'll get you out. Please, they were, they were going to eat me. Oh, oh, I would never let their hair. They were going to feed me to Kyle. <gasps> I pull out Mr. Bok Bok. You're my best friend, Mimi. You are my dude. Best friend forever. Yeah. Mimi and Bok Bok. Yeah. Do you have any coffee? Um, yeah. I and do. that's when you look over and there's there's freshly brewed coffee. Is that's, there cake too? Uh, okay, so yeah, so you catch up to to Mimi in the kitchen now, and uh, Mr. Bok Bok. Why don't you roll a perception check for me? <laughs> uh, can I ask Mr. Bok Bok a uh, question? But first, I give Mr. Bok Bok coffee. Okay. Mr. Bok Bok, have you seen Boom yeah. anywhere? Good one. Oh, there's no cake anywhere that you can see. Dang it. <laughs> hey, Galaxy, what's up? Do you know where, Have you seen Boom recently? I, I, um, no. Do you know where he is? No. <laughs> can you help look for so him? So there, there, there was something about, um, uh, a turtle that had him. Oh, no. Turtle guy. Dragon turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb name. Um, okay, maybe, uh, you might want to hide Mr. Bok Bok just for a while. Okay, Mr. Bok Bok. Yeah, um, we're gonna hide. And I'm trying to keep my voice down so you don't get calling attention okay. to us. Okay, so we're gonna hide, play hide and seek, right? Okay. So you're going. Um, wait, where can I hide him? Oh, I have a backpack, right? Okay, you I want me to hide in your backpack? Yes. Okay. But you have to be super quiet. I gotta be so quiet. Is, I gotta be so quiet because I mean it's either that or if, I'm, or I'm dinner, right? Yes. Okay. Um. So if you do a good job, I'll give you all the coffee you want. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Get in the backpack. He gets he gets into your backpack. Now stay. Me, me, Mr. Backpack forever. <laughs> you close the lid over his little chicken head and glasses. I'm sorry, Mr. Backpack. It's okay. 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 okay bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Um, I asked, wait, is Felicia still there? <laughs> no, you look around and Felicia's gone. Uh, let's blame it on him. Uh, let's just Bye, ditch. Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. Bum, bum. Dang it. I was it. waiting. I was, oh, I wanted to say it. So, no one's here. We all, d- we should all ditch the c- kitchen. Mm-hmm. Agreed. But okay. I wanted cake. So there's, uh, there's no, more wait. rooms that are on this floor. Um, I or you can just go for, back the way that you came. I want to look wait. for the turtle guy. Um, wait, wait. So you'd I, have to go back wait, the way wait, you wait. came. I, yes. I first scan the kitchen. Do I see any cake? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're so so. Deb walks in, and so says, you, "Me want cake." You're gonna take <laughs> another look around just for for Deb's sake, just in case. Is there any cake? When, roll another perception check, or no, roll investigation. Now. I would take brownies too. Or ice cake cream. or brownies or ice cream. <laughs> Nine. Nine. Um, we do have fun ice cream. You don't. You don't find any cake in here. But um, if you guys are going to be leaving out the way that you came, you do see what looks like a half-eaten piece of day-old cake that's on a plate near the garbage. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was a success. And, it, and it's not bad. Actually, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's for day old cake, half eaten. I want to shove some chocolate in my Copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you go past the, uh, past the mess hall, and they're back dancing and celebrating again about, do, do, about the Atlantean that, oh, uh, that they had captured. Oh, I say, thank you for helping me find my chicken. Um, where is this Atlantean? We don't know. And they, they keep going. We need boom. Have fun. We will. <laughs> and as you start going back up the stairs, about halfway up, that's when you encounter Ubo, the turtle, and he's slowly making his way down. I'll let Galaxy do the talking. Oh, um, uh, excuse me. And he stops, slowly moves his head towards you. Yes. Have you seen a corgi anywhere? A dog? E- and he looks behind him, looks past you, and when he sees that the coast is clear, he says, yes. Can you bring us to him? 
Why? Um, well, ha- we have gold. I'll pay you some gold. And some cake crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> we all know there's no cake crumbs left. Yeah, right. Would you take a hundred gold? I am not interested in your money. Well, do you think if you could just bring us to him? What anyways? are you interested in? I'm interested. And he turns his head, looks behind himself again, and looks past again just to make sure the coast is clear. I'm interested in escaping Kyle Land. Well, guess what? After all of this, we'll ex- we're escaping Kyle Land. Do you know how? We uh, have some sort of idea. Because I do. Bum, bum, bum. Do you well, think- why do you need our help? Kyle is very powerful and many people in Kyle land will try and stop you. So you want us to help you? You know how easy this would be? Dimension door. You don't know where you are. Yeah, but I can just have... And he starts walking past you. He says, come. Okay. We will walk and where is this corgi, though? In my office. Are we heading toward there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> did you rub his belly at all? I did not. Oh, he he likes he likes belly rubs. Good to know. <laughs> Could you pick up the pace? <laughs> <laughs> Rude. So, and he leads you through through the mess hall, and he, yeah, he does start picking up the pace a little bit. Thank you. And um, and so it's he gives you the impression that he can move very fast when he needs to, but his normal regular pace is is fairly slow, <laughs> fairly measured. I like it. And uh, <laughs> and he says, no one can get out of Kyle Land unless they have the ring to activate the portal. I have a ring. It's not the right ring. Kyle Um, Land, how much have you seen? Well, you haven't seen enough. Is Ring Kalamini, is that it? So, Kyle Land, we're not quite sure what it is, but the one thing that we are sure of is that it's in the Feywild, and it appears to be at the bottom of a very deep ocean. So, but we do know that Kyle has access to a portal that will bring you back to your home plane of existence. That the ocean and the mouth of the Kraken are the only ways out of Kyle land. So are we in a monster right now? There are different schools of thought on that. The leading is that this place was created by a wizard at one point to survive the Kraken. He was swallowed by the Kraken and he created a pocket dimension, if you wait, will. Wait is, wait, is that why Felicia wanted to know if Birdie was, I mean, Galaxy was a powerful wizard? Felicia was asking? She, I mean, Galaxy is a wizard and he was asking if she was a powerful one. Ubo stops again and looks down the hallway and, he's, and he gets in real close to you. Is Felicia doesn't want to leave. Felicia wants to take over. So if Felicia thinks you're powerful enough to help him, I could see why he would be interested in talking to you then. Okay, I'm just going to show him a pathetic thing then when it comes time. Oh, <laughs> to, oh to, to undermine how powerful These you are? These are my powers. <laughs> it just sparkles shoot up in the air. Oh, Confetti. Um. <laughs> I'll do jazz hands. <laughs> Fat Dev starts doing a dance, song and dance routine behind you. Yep, Mr. Yep. Bok Bok comes out with coffee. <laughs> <laughs> coffee! That's a talking chicken. Um, so, you know this um, Atlantean that they captured? Um... Do you know where he is? Yes. He's a friend of ours. He's in 
my office too. Oh. Let's head there. But what about fancy footwork guy? I forget his name. Yeah, where is he? Azaki was yeah. his name. Azaki. Where is he? Um, we don't really know. Azaki? Yeah. Um, I did not have a chance to meet the other prisoners, um, but more than likely they will be fighting in the pits like you did. So we were prisoners? If you wouldn't have won, yes. But we would have died. It, and then you would have been fed to the Kraken. As I said, the mouth of the Kraken is one of the other ways out of Kyle Land. That's wonderful. He leads you down the hall, and so he says, So, we need to get your friends out. We need to get my people out. Who are your people? My people are the other other turtles. Uh, there are... So he briefly briefly explains that in Kyle Land that there's a couple of different factions that are working in it, and some of them are loyal to Kyle, some of them are not. Uh, his particular faction is in charge of defending the lair or defending Kyle Land, and it's his people that are made up of turtles, tritons, and um, a weird people that you've never heard of. They're, he called them simics. And he said that the Tritons, so the, the Tritons and the Simics, they would be fine escaping through the water. But the Tortles, they would not survive. They need, to, they need the portal to leave Kyle Land. Okay, why don't we go to your office? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, so he leads you to his office. Okay. Will we ever find out if Azaki dies? Yeah, he leads you down the hall and uh, turns a bend, and then there is a large wooden door with uh, banded with steel, and he opens it up and it squeals open, and uh, there's a number of uh, open crates that are inside, so it looks like that uh, any kind of like goods or uh, valuables that are packed up uh, are being stacked here for for him to go through, and then that's when you hear a. Woof, woof, and you get bowled over by Boom as it comes running out of one of these crates. And he, and he knocks you to the floor, licking your face with all of the undead saliva you can take right now. <laughs> oh, hi, Boom. Hi, hi. He says, ah, yes, that is Boom. That is your dead live corgi. Yeah, um, I uh, basically created him. And he, he turns, and there's also a desk that's there. It looks like that he does a lot of administration work, but he's got some maps um, at quick glance on his desk. It looks like that it's maps and hallways um, of Kyle lands, because you can, just with a quick glance, you can see that some of the, uh, the, the drawings look very similar to the hallways that you have passed through. Yeah. And he says, in here, and he reaches over and presses something in the wall, and the wall... There's a secret door in the wall that it, the wall pushes in a couple inches and then slides to the side, and Ian is on the inside, uh, and he sits up and he's resting on a cot and he sits up and he gets a big smile on his face when he sees you. Ian, girls, well that's totally the wrong voice for him. He's like, girls, it's good to see you again. Yeah, you ready to escape? <laughs> you bet your sweet bottom I am. What's the plan? What? <laughs> <laughs> He was talking to me. (laughs) Dungeons and Dragons and Daughters is a proud member of the Block Party Podcast Network. Check out other shows such as GM Showcase, Story Arc, We're So Bad at Adventuring, and more. people howdy we're down at Folians. we have good news so check us out Bye.